Here's the thing. I don't want to say even I, because that sort of casts me in some sort of superior role, but I can't think of a better way of putting it. Even I am surprised today by the last 24 hours. You, you heard Sir Alan Duncan, I think someone who just about deserves that overused phrase, Tory grandee, speaking in, in language I've never heard before, I don't think, from a, from a conservative politician. And you have heard uh, reports of the open letter sent by three former Supreme Court justices, including a former president of the Supreme Court, and some 600 lawyers, academics and retired senior judges, warning in the strongest of terms that the government is breaching international law by continuing to arm Israel. You, you can read this letter. I'll tweet it for you if you want. It runs to 17 pages. It was sent last night, and it amounts to a, to a legal opinion. Here is the, uh, the gist of it. While we welcome the increasingly robust calls by your government for a cessation of fighting and the unobstructed entry to Gaza of humanitarian assistance, it's odd. I, I, even yesterday we took a call from someone insisting that the UK government was still fully supportive of what was happening in Gaza. To be that detached from observable reality is heartbreaking um, and horrifying at the same time, simultaneously to continue the sale of weapons and weapon systems to Israel and to maintain threats of suspending UK aid. UNRWA falls significantly short of your government's obligations under international law. Now, you'll probably be able to find somebody who spends their life um, doing sort of, uh, I don't know, conveyancing uh, uh, with their solicitor's qualifications and writing occasional articles for The Spectator to claim that the most august collection of former Supreme Court judges, academics uh, and, and retired senior judges, not to mention working lawyers, don't know what they're talking about. So there's a, you could bring a Brexit element to it. You could find the legal equivalent of Patrick Minford to come out and say, this just isn't true, this is outrageous, this is ridiculous. But at some point, gravity has to kick in. You have to respect the fact that Brenda Hale and, and her co-signatories to this letter have spent much of their professional lives addressing precisely these kind of issues. And they have um, made it absolutely crystal clear what the uh, accusation, what the state of play is. And, and as I mentioned, for someone like Alan Duncan to break cover in the way that he has in the last 24 hours is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. And on a much, much lighter note, how do you stop yourself overusing a word? Uh, it's been pointed out, mostly by Sheila Fogarty's producer, that I've started saying the word extraordinary an extraordinary amount of times in the last two or three months. And I would like to uh, cease this extraordinary behaviour as soon as it's as soon as it's plausible or feasible. But I just caught myself. I must have said it six times already this morning. Maybe we live in extraordinary times. And there is, isn't that a James song? And and there is no other word that fits the bill quite so perfectly. But here we are, okay? The killing of three British aid workers, very deliberately. I, I, I'm afraid there is no uh, wriggle room there. The, the, the nature of, of the attack, which is described in, in forensic detail in various media this morning, and indeed was yesterday, makes it impossible to claim... Um, a, 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 a form of error. You can you can claim we didn't mean to do it in some sort of uh, overarching way, but you can't claim we didn't mean to do it in that moment. And reports from Israel tell us that the uh, that the breakdown in in discipline on the front line, that regional commanders essentially pursue their own idea of what is and what is not a justified target, is a crucial part of. Um, a crucial part of the of the tragedy but to see the speed and the strength with which professional opinion has turned against israel has taken me by surprise i didn't think i was going to be surprised i was surprised when nick yesterday called for the arms sales to israel to stop i'm sure he won't mind me describing him as somebody who has historically been very full-throated in his support of um, uh, most actions of, of the Israeli governments, successive Israeli governments, up to and including Benjamin Netanyahu's. Uh, I opened the Daily Mail of all papers today. And this headline, in some ways, is I incredibly significant because it, it, it sounds as, I mean, it's six months ago, 
it would have been, I think, in The Guardian or, or somewhere like that. But Stephen Glover, one of their more um, vampiric columnists, he, he talks about being a great supporter of Israel, but having reached a point where he has to call for them to stop what they are currently doing. The uh, intervention, as I me mentioned, of Alan Duncan's calling for colleagues, calling for, for uh, conservative colleagues to be thrown out of the House of Lords. I'm a supporter of Israel, says Stephen Glover in the mail. And he's got page uh, 14. He's got the main op-ed position, um, or arguably the second most important op-ed position with the most important currently uh, addressing the question of what to do if you're faced by a herd of killer cows. Yeah, more evidence of the journalistic genius of the current editor of the Daily Mail. But but historically, this this piece here next to the op-eds, next to the comment column, is, is the sort of voice of the paper. I'm a supporter of Israel, but there comes a point when the killing wreaked on innocent people outweighs the original sin. A word on the original sin, the, 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 the brutal, bloody, disgusting murder and kidnapping of hostages by Hamas on October the 7th, some 12 hundred people killed in in brutal circumstances but that phrase there on that page in that paper outweighs the original sin addresses the question we've been asking on this program forever pretty much since it started is at what point does the response outweigh the provocation at what point does the response outweigh the original sin it's a great phrase that actually in this context so so why? In, in your view, why? Because all that really changed was the passport of the killed. All that really changed on Tuesday was the nationality of the entirely innocent aid worker, aid workers, plural, killed by Israeli ordinance. All, all that really changed was it was a word on a passport. And that word became British. And because three British aid workers were killed in circumstances with which everybody in the Gaza Strip is already grimly familiar, the whole, well, the whole country, from the Prime Minister down, has undertaken what looks like a quite extraordinary U-turn. And... I, I know bits of the answer to the question why, but I don't know all of it, and I'm not sure anybody does, but if we can assemble lots and lots of bits, then we'll get a fairly clear idea of what's happened. So, so why has the killing of John Chapman and his colleagues, and yesterday we heard testimony from the, from the families of the dead, the families of of John Chapman and James Kirby and, and, and the friends. And there was one in particular, I don't know if you heard it, a former colleague, a former colleague talking about thinking it would be his mate when he heard the name on the news and, and remembering his mate. And this would be a, you know, a former member of the Special Forces. And that catch in his voice broke me. That catch in his voice broke me. And yet why did it break me when I have seen footage of dead children? I've seen footage of siblings, children orphaned, mourning the killing of their parents. It's, it's weird. That, that's personal. That's emotional. But Paul uses a good phrase, actually. As I, as I say the word emotional, he talks about emotional proximity. It changes the impact. Yeah, but not to this degree. Not to the point that a former conservative cabinet minister comes out and calls for his conservative colleagues to be removed from the House of Lords. That 600 lawyers, academics, former judges suddenly join forces to essentially accuse the UK government of, of, uh, of breaking international law, of, of aiding and abetting um, Israel in, a, in an unsustainable and unjustifiable course. So I, I don't know, Johnny, if the whiteness of the aid workers matters. We, we had this conversation yesterday. I don't know how helpful it is to have it again today. I think that when the names were first revealed on the radio i was not aware of the ethnicity of the of the men killed and they were names that could quite easily have uh, have have belonged to people of a different of a different color but if i and i hesitate to accuse you of banging that drum a little too heavily and a little too quickly i don't think it would matter i think the crucial word here is british not white but the change has been extraordinary absolutely 
to me, almost unbelievable. So what's happened? 0345 6060 973 is the number that you need. Why has everything changed so quickly? And the examples I've given you, I think are irrefutable. I don't think you can accuse me this morning of exaggerating as, oh, it hasn't changed that much at all. You know, even if all of your news only comes from LBC, you've heard Nick calling for arms sales to Israel to stop. You've heard our news bulletins detailing the words of Sir Alan Duncan, a former Tory cabinet minister, a Tory grandee calling for other Tory peers to be essentially thrown out of the party, thrown out of the House of Lords. And then you have the 600 academics, lawyers, former judges, describing our government, which, of course, is full of people who were perfectly comfortable breaking international law in a very limited and specific way during the dog days of Brexit, of doing so by continuing to support Israel through the sale of arms. And you have that frankly bizarre tension mentioned in the letter where we're threatening to, to cease forms of support while continuing to provide weaponry. So take a moment, take a moment, and tell me why. Why? In, in, in the space of half an hour on Tuesday, support for Israel in the UK disappeared. 